Hey guys, Tom here. Today on the Homecraft Chronicles, our homemade wine is ready to go, and all we have to do is get it in a bottle, get it stored, and get it ready to enjoy. So stick around. It's been a couple weeks, the wine is settled and cleared, and now I'm just gonna bottle it. Now I have to just sanitize bottles. I filled my sink with a sanitizing solution it's just this stuff and mix with some water. I'm going to fill the bottles, let them soak for a minute or two, and then put them on the drying rack. Okay, I have all my bottles drying out from the sanitizer. I have my wine set up on this um, crate because I'm going to fill it into the sink with the hose, and it's a whole science thing, gravity, it's higher than where you're going to. So, Next, I just gotta fill all the bottles. Oh, and one thing, after I'm done with the sanitizer, I don't throw it out. It's good for a while, I just put it in empty juice containers and I save it. So let me get filling bottles. stick at the end of this hose is called a bottling cane and it has a little trigger on the bottom you just push it on the bottom of the bottle it opens the valve on the siphon and allows you to fill. And the good part about this is you fill up the bottle until it comes all the way to the top and the displacement from the bottling cane when you take it out gives you the perfect amount of headroom at the top of the bottle. So now that all the bottles are filled, the next thing and almost the last thing I have to do is cap them. I use synthetic corks and the reason I use synthetic corks is because with homemade wine, at least for me anyway, as, as much as you try to take care with it, you're always going to have sediment. If you use a natural cork, you kind of have to lay the bottle down because the natural cork is a little more porous and you don't want air up against the cork so you have to lay the bottle down so there's wine up against the cork so I don't like to lay the bottle down because then when you lay the bottle down the sediment will be here so when you turn it back upright to pour it you're mixing all the sediment back in whereas if you store it upright all the sediments down here if you take care to pour it you don't have sediment problems so I have my corks soaked in my sanit same sanitizing solution. I have my trusty corker, and it's a very simple process. You take a cork, you put it down in this little hole, and you push the handles down, and your wine is corked. And I'm just gonna do that over and over till I have all the wine corked. So why do I like to make wine? For me, I think the science of it is pretty cool. I think the creativeness of it is pretty cool. You're only limited by the fruit or juice that you can find. And you can pretty much ferment any juice that's 100% juice with no preservatives and pretty much any fruit. If you're using, um, if you're using regular fruit, you want it very, very ripe. So, it's like say, you know, basically, yes, you can make banana wine, but just say you want the fruit the way you'd want bananas, like if you were making banana bread, like borderline spoiled. They're not spoiled. 
a borderline way, way, way overripe. Because that's where all your sugar is going to be. And sugar is the main ingredient in fermentation. Okay, the last thing, well, it's almost the last thing you have to, that I do anyway, is I put the, this is called the capsule. The little top that you find on all the wine bottles. Oh, one thing I, I did not show you was, at some point, once your wine is in this container here, you have to, before you bottle it, you have to degas it. And this is, this is like a degasser that I bought. And what you do is you hook it up to your drill, you put it in the, in the jug, or well, one that fits, and this spins around with the drill. And what that does is it agitates the wine and gets all the oxygen out of the wine. So down the road, you don't have to worry about your wine discoloring. But I didn't show you that step, but you should do that. So how these capsules work is basically they're like a shrink wrap. And what I do is I take my heat gun on the low setting and I just shrink the, the thing to the bottle. So that's the process guys. As you can see, it wasn't that difficult, although it was a little bit of step by step, but it's very rewarding. When you're done, you have something nice, homemade, handcrafted a bottle of wine that you made yourself. And in my opinion, it's better than most stuff you can get in the store. If you want, throw on a little label at the end to personalize it. I just printed this out on standard shipping label and stuck it right on there. And the great thing about this wine, it's not something that you have to store before you can drink. Country wine, as they call it, you can drink pretty much right away. And it's delicious. So I hope you got something out of this video. You learned the process. Granted, it's a little bit of a step-by-step -step process, and it's not something that you make overnight. But I think the time put into it is well worth it. If you missed any part of this project, I'll put cards here for you to check out the other two parts so you see the whole process i also have links for all the products and kits and stuff you can get to try making your own wine i enjoyed showing this to you like i said it's just another part of home craft that we really enjoy around here so until i see you next time my name is tom remember take care of yourself and your home cheers <laughs>